Hello, how is this? What? Ah, ah. How does this sound? It sounds good. Welcome to Oddball. I'm Amino Hassan, still in Miami with Charlotte Wilder. Also still in Miami. Great show for you guys today. Eddie Johnson. More stories from Eddie Johnson. This time he's going to talk to us about the evolution of trash talk and mental toughness in the NBA. Mm -hmm. Eddie Johnson, one of the biggest <laughs> talking human beings I know on the face of the earth. Remarkable. So, Remarkable so, what I learned about this man. So this, this, this is going to be a treat. I promise you that. But Charlotte, mm -hmm. we got to start the show today. It's the weekend, people are getting ready, some people are feeling a little down. What do we gotta do? Hype me up. That's right, we're gonna do a hype me up. This is the segment where we're presented with the name of a player or a team, and we are tasked with giving them that, yeah. Feel good, that shot of uh, Confidence adrenaline. boost, yeah, Confidence. you know what it is? We're gonna be to these people what Todd Gibson was to James Wiseman. Yes, we are gonna be a rising Taj for these folks that there we have go. on our list. Right. Uh, who do we have up first? All right. First up is, you want to start? I'm going to throw you DeMontis Sabonis. Okay. I don't know why he needs to be hyped up. He's 10-0 and against Anthony Davis, and he's averaging 20 points a game, 13.6 rebounds, 8.4 assists, and 61.5% shooting from the field. He is top 10 in rebounds, assists, and field goal percentage. He'll be featured in the NBA Netflix series, but... Some people feel like he still doesn't get the attention and recognition in the league he deserves. So, Charlotte, hype up Mr. Sabonis. All right, DeMontis. First of all, very impressive stats. You're doing a great job. Um, to the, to, if you feel like you're not getting enough attention, um, it's probably because your team is sixth in the West, um, which isn't bad. That's good. Like, that's a playoff team. Um, but – there's not as much of a storyline, which is great for you. Just, like, ride it out. Just be like, we've been a solid team all year. See what happens when you get to the playoffs. You don't need me to hype me up in terms of how you're playing. You're playing amazing. You're doing great stuff. 10-0 and 0 against Anthony Davis? Like, okay. That sort of hypes up itself. Interesting part is the reality show. Yeah? Yes, because I think that this could be great for – getting people to watch more Kings games, mm -hmm. getting them invested in you. If you just, you know, don't really screw up on camera, which I don't think you will. They, they, and also you can't, not in these series. They edit right. all that stuff down. Exactly. Yeah. You're right, exactly. Uh, also, it's Spring Hill Entertainment. Just call LeBron oh. and be like, hey, can we cut that one scene? Um, <laughs> so you're doing great. You, you have a great weekend, my guy. There you go. All right. All right. He's already having a great weekend yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. You're playing great. Your team's winning. It's you're awesome. Uh, Jamal Murray, I mean, ah. you have to hype up. He said, I want to be the best player ever. Ah. Only seven players in NBA hit my... <laughs> okay, this is going to be... Okay, let me okay. stretch. You, you, you yeah, you, you stretch. I'm going to set this up for you. Um, wow. Uh, only seven players in NBA history have averaged at least 25 points, five rebounds, and five assists per game over at least 50 career playoff games. He's among them. The others are Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Jerry West, Steph Curry, Giannis, and Jokic. Uh... When asked if he believes he's underrated, Murray didn't hesitate. From maybe media or non-basketball followers, maybe. maybe. I definitely think I have the respect of my peers. That's all that matters. I hype him up. All right. Uh, Jamal. All right. So first of all, winning is the number one thing. That's why we play this game. We play this game not for recognition, not for labels, not for uh, trinkets. We play it to win. And you did the ultimate thing last year, and you won. And you weren't just a passenger on this win. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously you play with the best player in the world in Nikola Jokic, but we all acknowledge that he didn't just like, well, I'll just score 40 a game, and everyone undragged these bums. No, you played a pivotal role. You are the number one uh, clutch shot maker for the Denver Nuggets down the stretch. You proved it time and time again. Every year, every time you go to the playoffs, you always play way better in the playoffs than you do in the regular season, which I think is a great sign of answering the call when the call is most dire. Dude, all you got to do is focus on winning and uh, everything else will take care of itself. As the uh, old lyric goes, while they're making up facts, we're raking up plaques. That's what you got to worry about, and that's what you got to be. The whole best player ever thing, we'll talk about that on another day. <laughs> this is a hype me up. All I got to do is hype you up on telling you you're doing, you're doing perfect. You're, you're doing, doing great. great. Yeah. Congrats, my dude. All right, Charlotte, you have to hype up 
Darvin Ham, Lakers head coach Darvin Ham, because players really want him to like them, win or lose. The Lakers are 6-4 and four in the last 10 games. They're currently ninth in the West, and they're fighting for a play-in spot. D'Angelo Russell believes that Dennis Schroeder was the reason he couldn't establish a relationship with Darvin Ham. He said, quote, his relationship, you're talking about Schroeder's relationship with Darvin, is the reason I couldn't have a relationship with Darvin. When I was struggling, I would have been able to come to the coach and say, bro, this is what we should do. Like, I can help you. Instead, there was no dialogue. I just accepted it, and we got swept, and I'm here, and he, Dennis Schroeder, is not, and I like our chances. According to Trevor Lane, host of Lakers Nation, there's a perception that Darvin Ham shows favoritism towards players he's worked with before. So, Charlotte, you have to hype up Coach Ham. Darvin, uh, first of all, you're still there. That's great. A lot of a lot of people were wondering if you were going to hold on to your job. You have held on to it, and you have seemed to have the support of Jeannie Buss and the Lakers organization and LeBron James. Because let's be honest, if he wasn't into you, you would probably not be there. So that's all great. Uh, you're going to have to really put your foot on the gas in in this next stretch. You are going to have to get the Lakers into that playing spot. They've got to be in the playoffs. It's LeBron. We can't. We're not. He's not a spring chicken anymore to the point where we can just, like, skip a year. Um, and I think you can do it. And I think when it comes to favoritism, who's who's to say, right? Like, just try to be nice to everybody. Everybody seems to like you. That's sort of all I've got, Darvin. Uh, you're doing. You're making a lot of money, and you're the coach of the Lakers, you and go. you haven't been fired. So wow. Congrats. That's okay. And I that thought, was a bad one. That was hard. I thought mine was, well, you want it hard. Read that next name because <laughs> – Oh, God. Um, DeAndre Ayton. Um, Read the quote. He said, I just be trying to bust that ass. Mm. That's about it. Whether I look like the bad guy or not, I'm trying to be great. I'm trying to be a winner in this league. I'm trying to be known as that guy. If you're around me, you're going to learn how to win. So, DeAndre, you're you're playing great. You've come (laughs) back from a hand injury, right? You're averaging... 26 points on 57% shooting from the field, 17 rebounds. You are living up to your self-appointed nickname of Dominaton. You posted three straight games with 20 points and 15 rebounds. That's really good, too. Blazers mm-hmm. won four of their last 10 games, okay. which uh, doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a massive improvement on what they've done the yeah. rest of the season. And you're a guy that everyone recognizes as having a lot of talent, just incredibly talented and gifted. And I hope, That you find what you're looking for, which is for people to look at you as a winner, for people to come to you to learn how to win. I love that attitude. I love that can do. And I love that you're putting yourself mentally where you want to be, not where you are right now. Now you're cooking with gas. Yeah. And so I would say to you, DeAndre Ayton, keep on, keep that mentality, keep working hard. And maybe one day you too can learn how to win so that you can then teach others how to win. All right. Charlotte, the last name on the list, hmm. Taj Gibson. Yes, you ride know with why. Taj. Hashtag rising Taj. You know why we're doing Taj Gibson. Uh, Charlotte, you have to make the case to Monty Williams and Troy Weaver that they've got to keep Taj Gibson on the roster. Okay, so, gentlemen, what do I need to tell you? How do you not see this yourselves? Mm. How are you not signing him? To another 10 day or the rest of the season. Guys, the Pistons are 9 and 52 uh-huh. without Taj. Mm-hmm. With, with Taj, them? they are 3 and 1. Now, Sometimes it doesn't matter. Now, Charlotte, let me ask you a question, yeah. right? I'm just trying to get some clarification here. I'm with you on this, but I've been wondering because I, I haven't watched these Pistons games. Yes, neither have I. How's Taj played? Well, he's not. What do you mean? He's not playing. He, um, like he's not stat playing line well. Is like zero, 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 he just zero, goes zero, in zero. and nothing happens. Or are you talking about no, zero? No, I, I don't think he's zero in the minutes column as well. Yeah, got um, it. I don't think he's playing. However, <laughs> Taj, that doesn't matter because you have clearly been a fort. Tell me what else has changed for the Pistons. What else? What else has changed so fundamentally? What, oh, who, well, well, Troy Weaver got that fan kicked out. Yeah, okay. Uh, Cameron from from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That's true. Alan Rock was. Uh, dispose of in that arena. But I would argue that Taj has been the positive force that came in and got rid of that negative energy. Uh-huh. 
and that the Pistons are rolling because now they have a guy who knows what it's like to work hard, who isn't a diva, who knows how to be a teammate. Who knows who makes, how to win. Who knows how to win. Who knows how to win. Who has made James Wiseman give given him the confidence that he needs, and he's been playing great. There you go. So keep Taj around for James. I mean, come on. In Latin, they have a term called ipso facto, and that's what Charlotte just did. I like to say ipso fatso. Q-E-D. Thus it is proved. Quad yes. erat demonstratum. I learned that in math. I learned that in Latin. I am Eddie Johnson, and this is story time. As a player... I mean, I feel like as a fan, if I hear that someone trash talks and you're like, oh, well, you better back that up. Mm -hmm. Is that how players feel? Like if people if people are trash talking, but they're very good, are you sort of like, well, I guess you can? Or is it still like, shut up? Just compete. Yeah. You know, it's between the lines. Everything goes on between the lines. Like somebody needs to tell Beef Stewart that, right? In the locker room, <laughs> out in the hallways, you know, you don't fight people. But between the lines, you know, it's 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 a mental game. <clears throat> 94 by 48. It's a small surface. <laughs> you have many wars going on and psychological wars that helps you dominate the guy that you're playing. Mm -hmm. And I picked that up. And I wasn't the highest jumper, wasn't the fastest guy but I can get in people's head. And, and that, to me, was the best asset that I had. Yeah. You know, because of that. And, you know, and, and so I had, I, had little, I had total fun doing it. Like, Rich Kelly, a guy who's playing in the league, seven-foot guy from Stanford, you would never know, taught me the art of leadership. And, and once he taught me that, I used it to the best of my you know, level that I can do. Malik Seeley, you all remember, yeah. you know, he's gone, yeah. you know, it was a horrible so. accident that took his life. But I remember him as a rookie. I did to him what Larry Bird did to me. <laughs> and after the game, I felt so bad about it because he didn't react. Mm. And I went up to him and I said, hey man, don't ever let anybody bother you on this court like that. Well. You know, mm -hmm. I literally felt bad about it because I, I, I. What'd you, t what'd you say? <laughs> I was more so just knocking him around. Right. What you gonna do? Right. 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 <laughs> like, what you gonna do? Like you know, just in his ear. Yeah. And just you know, I only did it for the first five minutes. I just didn't feel like it was an exhibition game. I didn't feel like playing, <laughs> but I didn't want to have to fight somebody, right? So I wanted to get in their head. And, you know, and just say, I, okay, I got an easy night. Yeah. Mm. And that's what a lot of guys did back in my era. They tested you. Maurice Lucas used to always say, Eddie, I'm going to try to punk the first person early in the game to see if I got to work hard. <laughs> oh, my God. So he'll hit the guy. And he'll have teammates, like, if it's getting ready to break out, they'll run over to try to break it up. Yeah. And then Mo said, you know, I'm trying to go at him like I want to fight him, but I really don't. <laughs> but I'm trying to get in his head so I don't have to work hard that night. It's just layers of performance. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he told me that. And, I, and you watch Maurice Lucas over his career, that's what he actually did. He would try to intimidate people early to see. And he'll say, okay, I got a long night tonight. That's what we try to do in interviews, but you were immune to it, Eddie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. We don't try to do it. Nobody's intimidated. You can. <laughs> he tries to. I, I do. I, I do what I can when I can. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, um, you talk about kind of like that's how it was in your era. Like the guys would do that. Mm -hmm. What do you think the modern player is missing the most in terms of the intangible stuff? I think a couple of things. I think uh, the first thing is is, is mental toughness. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think that they give in to it. Def define mental toughness. Because people talk about, oh, the guys are mentally tough, yeah. or you have to be mentally tough. What does that mean, though? Well, I think, one, uh, you know, making sure that you're in shape, for one. Fighting through fatigue. Right. Uh, of the moment. Like a lot of guys, they go to a gym 
and they go and they think they're working out, but they're not. Like, mm. for instance, every shot that I ever took when I trained, I was moving. Anybody can go stand still and shoot. Right. That's YMCA knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can play in the league. No, no, dude. You got a guy running at you. You know, right. you got to move to get open. It's that part that I think, you know, guys don't want to do. We don't have a lot of guys in this league that like to move without the ball. That's why Steph stands out. Mm. You know, that's why Clay stands out. Ray Allen of the world stood out because they moved mm -hmm. and it looked unique. Guys today, they just want to take the shortcut because they have a skill they can handle to be able to go get to the point where they could have really used being creative to get there and to be able to fight through that. I just think that they just, I don't know, the, the mental toughness for me uh, also leads to taking pain. Mm -hmm. You know, like, Draymond laid on the floor the other day for five minutes. <laughs> Doesn't he know that hurts his persona? <laughs> well, That's that a tough lot. guy. <laughs> yeah. I love Draymond. I, Draymond, I, I get on Draymond, and I'm sure he probably sees some stuff that I say, but I actually do love him. I do. I, do. Uh, I call Big Ten games when he played at Michigan State. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I've interviewed him a lot of times. But doesn't he realize he's like the bully, <laughs> and then the bully laying there on the floor, <laughs> and nobody helped him? Did that's, you see yeah, that? Yeah. That's, like, yeah. That, that's what happens. Like, nobody's helping you, and he's laying on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone's no, just no, like... No, 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 I'm getting up. If I'm the bully, I'm crawling to the bench. I am not laying there. Like, they ran past him two, three times. <laughs> that was hilarious. And I know he was hurt. He got hit. But still, you know, it's, it's that kind of thing. And, and Draymond's not the one. I mean, he is a tough guy. Yeah. Uh, but it's the guys that get injured and they roll around on the floor and then they, they get help to the bench. And then when the timeout's over, they walk out there normal. <laughs> I yeah, got over I, it. Yeah. I'm like... Well, my, my favorite is they, they limp on the defensive end. Then when it's on offense, all of a sudden that limp is yes. gone. Yeah, the limp is gone. <laughs> I'm like, you know, back in our day, and we were taught this, and I think it was a reason why. And I think that's why these guys aren't total at fault, is that we were always scared that somebody's going to come in the game and we wouldn't get back in. Mm. Right. And everybody with similar salaries, you could get cut or waived or whatever, and the teams didn't really – it didn't hurt them because it wasn't like you were making a ton of money. Mm. And so you would play through pain. You would play through injury. And you develop this mental toughness to fight through it. And, you know, and I'm telling you, some of my best games I've ever had is when I was actually hurt. Mm. Mm. I'm not telling players to play injured. If you're injured, you don't play. But if you're hurt, fight through it. And I've had some of my best games when I was compromised. Yeah. And, and I think that part... And, and just the, the hurt feelings with people say stuff and the fans and all that to me is just, I don't know. It's just they grew up, you know, as having the answer, you know, get the answer yes all the time. And that's the part I would love to see improve. The complaining to officials on every play. I, I, I mean, it's just that kind of stuff that, and that's what I mean by the mental toughness part. Just fight through it, right. man. Push yourself through it. And I'm, a lot of players that do that now. Yeah. Like, you can get on Jimmy Butler a lot for things that he says and all that. And I don't, you know, the regular season doesn't mean anything, which drives me nuts. Mm -hmm. But you never see him out there arguing and screaming at officials. Yeah. yeah. You never see it. You know, he accepts it. Kawhi accepts it. So it's things that guys do that, that are mentally tough and they fight through it. But, man, some of them just get on my nerves. Do you feel like part of it is is an ability to let go of ego? Or, you know, when I, you've done motivational speaking and mm -hmm. when you take what you learned on the court, how do you translate that for people in their everyday lives? Like, what is the biggest takeaway that you can move from the court to your life if you're not a professional athlete? Well, wow, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, well Vinny. Done. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> I think it's all parallel. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think what I've learned at basketball is definitely follow into my life, mm -hmm. you know, and how I act and how I react to people. Uh, like I said, I was taught leadership uh, by a guy, Rich Kelly, 
I remember he told me, he said, Eddie, stare, stare, stare at people and figure them out. And I was like, what do you mean by that? And then I realized he used to always stare at people. He used to always say, what's up with Rich Kelly? <laughs> 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 you know, what's up with Rich? <laughs> you know, he always stared at people. And you know, at that time, we didn't have charter. We had, you know, like it was like we had to fiend for ourselves. Yeah. Veterans always got the little six first class seats and everybody else had to fiend for themselves. God, how did you you're fit? sitting at yeah, bulkheads. Like... As a young guy, you sitting at bulkheads in the wall right here. <laughs> now you have to understand, you're an athlete and the wall's right here and you can't stretch your knees, yeah. you in pain, that's torture. Cause your knees are burning, yeah. right? So you had, you're on the airplane, yeah. baby. <laughs> <laughs> your foot climbing the wall. But Rich used to always stare at people. Yeah. So I finally sat next to him. And I'm like, Rich, why are you always turning around looking at players, staring at players? He's like, look, you stare at them because I stare at them because, like, when I do approach him finally, mm -hmm. I feel like I know him. I'm watching them. I'm figuring out their tendencies and what they do and how they talk and mm -hmm. how to approach them. I'm like, huh. I started trying it out. And he started staring and at people? He started working. Yeah? <laughs> started working. And, and I just developed that over my career. And any team that I was on, I thought I was a leader and be able to reach people. And I remember LaSalle Thompson was a center on our team, and, and he's called him Tank. And uh, he's a Jekyll and Hyde type guy. And I remember we had a big game against New York. And it goes into the motivation of what you're talking about. So I'm like, Tank, I was at the mall today. He's like, yeah. I said, yeah, I ran to Patrick Ewing. Told him he going to kick you over there. <laughs> Tank, very good friend of mine. So he, he believed it. Dude had the best game of his career. So he wanted to go fight Pat after that. <laughs> I said, no, 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 Tank, Tank, Tank. I lied. <laughs> and he grabbed me. And he, then he started laughing and he said, all right, thanks. You know, because he knew that he could reach a level that he couldn't. Mm -hmm. And I just try to take, I've taken that outside of, of basketball. You know, when I try to motivate people, when I try to motivate kids, uh, you just, you got to observe them first, mm -hmm. observe their actions, and then mm -hmm. approach it that way. And I think I've had a lot of success with that. Uh, I enjoy doing it. Uh, even athletes today, I'll go up. I went up to Devin Booker. Uh, Devin had, uh, we were in Mexico. And uh, we were sitting there. Uh, we played there twice, so we had practice the next day. So I was sitting there, and he came over, and he sat next to me. And he says, uh, he calls me Jump Shot. Jump Shot, what's up? You know, and he sits down. And I said, yeah, you, you, broke, you broke my record last night. And he's like, what, what record was that? I said, I think I had the Suns record for like most points in the quarter. Mm. It was like 26 or something. And he like, oh, okay, yeah. But I said, uh, you're not gonna break the one I got for a half. <laughs> <laughs> you're not gonna get it. And he's like, what is that? I said, 43. And he stood up and he looked at me this is, a, I think, a 20-year-old, 20, 20, 21-year-old. Mm -hmm. He looked at me. I'm like, okay. Two weeks later, he got 70 in Boston. Yeah. And during the game, he was walking by the scores table. How does it look? How does that 43 look? <laughs> <laughs> That's how you do it, folks. Yeah. How does that 43 look? Like, I, 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 I hit him with something, yeah. and he broke my record and Tom Chambers' record, which was 60, the same night. Mm -hmm. And to me, we don't have enough of that. We don't have enough of us older players challenging these young guys that sort of way, in a good way. Mm -hmm. Well, in a way that, but that's, I think part of it is, part of it obviously not enough of that, but part of it is, like, Book is the kind of guy that responds positively to Right. It. And there are a lot of guys now that, you say something like that, man, and they, they, bristle they, they, or, they, they get, yeah. yeah, they walk away mad right. at you for basically pointing out, you know, right. a, like a fact, you know, I had 43 and a half, I had 26 and a quarter, like, you, are you you're supposed to be this great player? Beat it. Show me. And, yeah. And, and 
the great ones hear that and say, okay, all right, oh, that, that's what you got? You, you think that, that's yeah. cool? I got something for you. Go for it. Yeah. Go for it. it. And those are the ones you know are making. That's all the oddball for today. Tune in tomorrow. Where are you going? <laughs>